Well, I don't know how long I have been saying this, but I've been saying it for quite some time. Um, the Northeast, the one of the definitely one of the biggest areas to vote for Brexit and even to vote for Leave was always going to be the area that took pretty much the biggest brunt of Brexit. Why is that? Well, it's partly because a the northeast and the way it does business does not do business with the rest of the world. Basically, it just simply doesn't. And it does business rather than someone in Singapore or in America or Canada. It does business with people in Amsterdam, in Germany, in France. That is because that is where its closest market is. That is where it gets the best bang for its buck. And a lot of Brexiteers are going to respond to this by saying, oh, well, it'll be fine. They can go out to these new markets and all these other, quote, new wonderful trade deals that we've got. Not that easy. <laughs> it is not easy for a company just to go, OK, we've been cut off from Europe. Now we're going to go and get into this new market. One of the big things that Brexit will do and as departing from the EU will do is the fact that lots of these companies are going to end up being locked out of the European Union. And that means um, less exports, less income uh, will probably lead to less investment, will lead to probably downsizing and ultimately lead to a smaller economy. We've already gone over a couple of weeks ago, well, months ago now, of the business in Doncaster, the dried pet food business, 30% of its business was exported to the EU. That's 30% of the business it lost. That's a lot of business for a company just to lose overnight. And now lots of businesses are now coming forward and saying we are now having significant problems. And remember, we're still not at the point yet where checks are in place. The minute checks start to come online, which is, again is will be in October, it is going to be an even bigger mess. But before we do jump into today's article, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, as well as one off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. So this uh, today's article comes from The Guardian. The title is Business Chief Calls on the PM to Save the Northeast from Brexit Damage. So, James Ramsbottom, the CEO of the North East England Chamber of Commerce, says a letter sent to Boris Johnson still remains unanswered. A letter to Boris Johnson sent a fortnight ago by James, Rambo by James Ramsbottom called on the Prime Minister to save the North East from, quote, the damage being done to our economy by Brexit and urged him to give his most urgent and personal attention. Two weeks later, it remains unanswered. Ramsbottom is the chief executive of the North East England Chamber of Commerce and speaks for thousands of businesses caught by the red tape and extra costs com uh, complying with new EU rules. In a recent survey, 38% of members said that the sales to Europe had fallen since January. This is not teething problems, he says. Our ports face the EU and our region has the highest proportion of any exporting to the EU. It is vital that more barriers come down. Well, that ain't happening anytime soon because come October, more barriers are about to shoot up very, very much. So surveys by the chamber show that three quarters of its members wanted to stay in the single market when asked about their personal views. The same proportion reported they had been financially harmed by leaving the EU. Many business people in the Northeast tell me the only way to improve the situation is to go back into the single market. We didn't say that in the letter because the Prime Minister's dogmatic attitude to the subject told us it would fall on deaf ears, he says. 
Instead, the group has called for a relaxation of the rules to allow more HGV truck drivers to work in the UK and more generous funding of SME Brexit support to try and help more companies train staff, buy equipment and needed to complete the new customs checks. And you may remember just a couple of days ago, we were talking about the wine merchant, wine, wine merchant, the wine merchant who was talking about the British customs um uh, system known as Chief and basically what an absolute nightmare that it is the fact that it doesn't have a help helpline, you can't just pick up the phone and talk to someone you have to send an email and so far it's taking at least five to two weeks to get a response on some of these things, imagine if you are a business that needs to export something over to Europe like tomorrow that's that other company now going well we're probably not going to buy anything from the uk anytime soon if we need this in a rush again and again that's jobs potentially at risk that is companies losing huge amounts of business reputation all sorts gone overnight and that is almost ungettable back So, the letter ended by telling the Prime Minister of the damaging the ability of businesses who create wealth for our nation will make the country so much poorer. To do so when we are state striving to try and recover from the pandemic with all of its resulting debt, it will burden this nation for decades. He's not, he's not wrong there. Uh, very recently, there's been a report out, uh, we might go over it because it's quite interesting reading, um, that they think that post-pandemic, Britain could end up facing a recession. Um, again, the ABCs have all come together and this could be the result, that we end up in an austerity. So, not austerity, um, in a recession. So, again, the outlook for the UK's recovery is not looking good. Ramsbottom. The former Barclays Bank executive and the son of former Army General David Ramsbottom, the crossbench life peer, said that he is totally apolitical and, when not speaking to local businesses, spends much of his time talking to the leaders of local councils, the majority of them Labour. It seems to me that this government has broken the traditional line between the Conservative Party and business. The real issue is the complete lack of strategic planning. From our perspective, there has been none whatsoever. And Brexit was the same. There was no strategic plan to make Brexit a success, he says. Tariffs have remained at zero under the trade deal made between the UK and the EU. But Ramsbottom provided a long list of barriers and ministers failed to sort out, including how to apply new rules of origin that determine which goods qualify as tariff-free, Difficulties even obtaining health certificates and additional checks on goods that create queues at ports. His sense of loss from exiting the EU is supported by the analysis from the Sussex University's UK trade observation policy, which last month said that between January and April this year, trade and the cooperation agreement negotiated that succeeded the customs union membership reduced UK exports to the EU by 18.7% and imports from the EU by 25%, compared to the scenario in which the UK did not leave the EU. The North East is one of the smallest private sectors relative to the size of the economy after decades of government support, as seen with several Whitehall uh, back office departments decamped from London. Earlier this year, Chancellor Ricky Sunak announced that he would at least uh, be sending the Treasury campus in Darlington which said would show the government seriousness about levelling up. Again, it's not going to uh, affect it that area too much. Um, just look what happened when they sent the uh, passport office up to uh, Donington. Uh, not, not not Donington, Darlington. Um, not, not, was it? Yeah, they sent it up north somewhere. Again, didn't really help out. Ramsbottom, who this autumn will step down at the Chamber's Chief Executive after about 15 years to become the chair of the Newcastle Building Society, is unimpressed. 
He says investments are leeching away from this region that holds up the rail manufacturers Hitchens plans for the region as, a, as an example. Hitachi, sorry, Hitachi, sorry, I've got, got to pronounce that right. Hitachi bought a site in the northeast with a view of building trains for the whole of Europe. This place was big enough for three factories, but they have only built one and the rest of the land is now vacant. If you want to see where the trains are going to be made for the EU, you'll have to visit Hitachi's new factory in Italy. Referring to the cabinet, he says, if Brexit was such a success, you would think that they would be shouting it from the rooftops, but they are not. And that's exactly it. I mean, the whole Hitachi thing with the rails, that was, uh, we've talked about that before. There was going to be a massive new factory. They've only built one out of the plan three. The others are now being built in, uh, you know, in Italy. <laughs> and again, if you wanted, if you were thinking and a government who was so focused on, quote, leveling up and, quote, trying to make Brexit a success might be an area you wanted to focus on. Because sooner or later, people in the North are going to catch on. They are going to realise that Brexit hasn't been a success. They are going to realise that the promises that were complete hokum. They are going to realise that levelling up, complete nonsense. And my biggest worry is that that anger could be captured by a far-right party. That's my biggest worry and concern. Um, again, it's possible, um, and Labour could could seek on this if they put forward a really good manifesto at the next election to really propel hope and actually build a better Britain than at least the Conservatives can build, because uh, they certainly aren't going to build back better after this pandemic. Um, like I say, you've already got reports of a potential recession for the UK. Uh, coming in, which is incredibly, incredibly worrying. So, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one off donation link called Buy Me a Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.